you know, it's uh, late November, almost December. For most of you guys, well, who knows where you live, but for most of you guys that are watching, winter may have already hit, but here, eh, it's coming a little late. I mean, we've had some nights below freezing, but the days for the most part are getting up there. So it's a little bit cool and chilly out today, but not cold. Uh, the next week's forecast looks like uh, we've got a couple of nights getting down into the, the teens and the 20s and then up in the 40s and 50s during the day. So it's not terrible, but it is winter time coming and it is going to get much, much colder. So we need to get prepared for winter. I'm going to show you what I do to make sure the rabbits and the quail are all taken care of for winter today. So let's get to it. Hey guys, welcome back to another Slightly Redneck video. Again, my name is Chris, and if you're not familiar with this channel, I help you to produce your own meat, eggs, and vegetables from your backyard, your balcony, your deck, your garage, or even a spare room in your house if that's the way you want to do it. So like I said, we're talking about wintertime coming today. The rabbits are actually, we're going to start with these guys because these guys are super easy to take care of in the wintertime. Much easier than the summertime, actually. They got big fur coats on. Summertime heat, especially in southwest Missouri, you know, this last summer was 105 degrees like every single day, no rain, super dry, and these guys struggle a little bit in the heat. Uh, when it gets up over about 80 degrees, you know, there's a good chance your bucks will go sterile. Uh, your rabbits just tend to be just kind of pretty miserable and uncomfortable. Now, today we're in the mid 40s and everybody looks perfectly happy they're fine they're, there's no problems going on right here these guys can handle sub freezing temperatures perfectly well no problems at all the big difference is i got to get rid of this automatic watering system because uh that's going to freeze up that's not going to work so we're going to take that down honestly i never trained these guys to it anyway they're new rabbits this year and i never trained them to the automatic watering system i just haven't taken it down yet but i'm going to go ahead and pull all these get the uh, tubes and the uh, little water nipples here out of here and then I'll be right back with you and we'll tell you what we're going to do to make sure these guys are watered and uh, taken care of all winter long. There we go. Good grief, that was hard. Way harder than it should have been. Alright, let's pick it up. Oh, I dropped the spring, didn't I? Yeah, dang it. I'm gonna dig that out. We'll get to it later. It's not falling out of there.
All right, so we got the watering system down. Now let's talk about what we need to do to make sure our rabbits stay healthy and happy all winter long. And you know, this really doesn't matter. I mean, I'm in Southwest Missouri, we do get cold. Some of you guys in northern climates get way colder than we do. Uh, we get temperatures, you know, down below zero, and it'll stay there for a week or two at a time. Sometimes we'll get breaks in there uh, where it'll get up above that. We don't get tons of snow, uh, but this does, it doesn't really matter. Uh, like I said, your rabbits are pretty well well adapted to handle the cold pretty well. Um, I don't you know you don't need to stuff their your, their cages with straw or anything like that. If you want to put a nest box type you know a box in there with straw in it. You know, go right ahead. They may get in there and burrow in it a little bit and use it, but it's not a necessity. In fact, you know, stuffing them with straw, it, it can be, um, it's going to be pretty messy. So you're going to have to, if you put a bunch of straw in their cage, you're going to be cleaning up quite a bit, which is, you know, you can do that for sure, but they don't need it necessarily. The hardest part about wintertime with the rabbits is really just watering them. Let me show you what I use to water them in. Let me open this up and get this water bowl out. This is what I use. I like these rubber crocs like this and i you know i can't tilt it very far because i'm going to spill the water out uh, but when it's down below freezing and right now it's not so it's not a big deal um, what i'll do is i'll come out in the morning and just fill it up about that full i just carry a, an old milk jug i fill with water fill it up about that far they'll go and get their drink out of it they'll even chew ice so if it does freeze over it's okay um, in the afternoon i'll come back and fill it up about that much further uh, with water They'll come and get another drink out of it, get drink as much as they want right then, and they're fine for the rest of the day. And then the next morning I can come out and I can just dump it over and stomp it and knock all the ice out of it because it's rubber. It's not gonna break. So these work really, really well for watering the rabbits. And uh, here, watch out, let me get this back in here and then we'll come back and talk to you a little bit more. All right, so the other thing that we need to do is to make sure that we have a way to keep them out of the weather, like when it's just pouring you know, snow or rain or, you know, high winds, you know, that kind of thing, especially in the, you know, super freezing cold temperatures, or even in the summertime for that matter. But just need a way to protect them from the weather, give them a place to get out of the weather. Now, the way I do that, of course, I've got this hutch over them so it protects them from rain coming down. Uh, but the front of this is open completely. That's why I've got these tarps here. These go, these are like 12 foot tarps. They go all the way to the ground. So what I do if there's going to be a heavy storm coming in or lots of wind that shifts direction, I mean, our predominant wind is this direction here and they're up against the side of my house. So there's not usually wind blowing directly on them. But if the wind does shift to where it's coming in this direction, we've got high winds, we've got a storm coming in, uh, we're going to have, you know, super cold temperatures with wind for the next couple of days. These tarps, could get, I pull them down and I stake them out to where they're at an angle like this. So I can still walk through here but what they do is they provide a wind block and a weather block um, for any kind of weather going out here and it keeps the rabbits pretty dry and pretty safe. And that's really it. That's all I do. Most of the time these just stay open because like I said, they don't really need it. They're doing just fine. You, they're perfectly happy. I have bred rabbits in the middle of winter Temperature is well below zero or right close to zero anyway. And I uh, had them have babies. And as long as they have them in the nest box, everything is fine. Baby rabbit, everything. It just works perfectly well. Whereas in the summertime, the heat of summer, that's where your rabbits struggle a little bit. But that's a topic for another video. So that's really it as far as taking care of the rabbits in the wintertime. Make sure they've got, you know, make sure they're being fed enough. As far as feeding them goes, I've talked about this in many other videos before, but I just give them about, uh, let me show you what I use here. This cup right here, which I don't, what is this, eight ounces maybe? I don't know what it is. I give them about that much per day. And just watch your rabbits. Um, they may eat just slightly more in the winter time. It's not a bad idea to throw a couple of, you know, black oil sunflower seeds in there, shell and all, um, you know, three or four a day, something like that. Those are pretty high in fat. That'll help them keep a little bit warmer if they need it but I give them one cup of food a day. And if the rabbits are acting like when I come to feed them in the morning, they've cleaned up everything in their, their feeder and they're just dive right into their feeder as soon as I pour food in there, I'll put about that much more in there, uh, just a little bit more. Now, if they've got pellets left over, well then I just give them just a little bit less that day. You only wanna feed them about as much as they'll consume within 24 hours and not act like they're starving when you come to feed them. So you just watch your rabbits, you kind of figure out how much they're gonna eat every day. And they go through stages, you know, sometimes they'll eat a little bit more and sometimes they'll eat a little bit less. Um, so, you know, that's, rabbits are super easy to care for in the wintertime. The hardest part is just watering them. And that's the best way I've found to water them. I don't wanna use, um, I don't use a heated waterer for my rabbits because 
Well, for a couple of reasons. One, it's not that big a deal to just put water in the bowl and you know fill it up every day. I gotta come out here and feed them every day anyway, so that's not that big of a deal. The second reason is, um, you know, if I use a heated water plate, there's a cord coming off there. Rabbits chew on everything, and I'm a little concerned that, you know, some of my rabbits, I, I do tend to keep the water bowls right here in the corner, but they move them around. Some of them like them. Um, I've got a doe over there. I'm not going to bother taking it, but she likes her water bowl right in the middle of the cage. And no matter where I put it, she's going to move it right to the middle of the cage. Don't know why. That's just where she likes it. So she could get access to a cord, and she might chew on the cord. I don't want to have to take that chance. Um, you know, there's many things that could happen there. Kill your rabbit, of course, chewing on a cord. Um, you know, burn down the, the rabbit hutch. You know, all kinds of craziness could happen with that. So I just avoid that altogether. It's not that big a deal for me to bring water out to the rabbits a couple of times a day. But that's it. Rabbits are easy to care for. Give them a windbreak. Give them, make sure they have food and water. That's all you got to do. They're fine. All right, so we're out here at the quail hutches now, and you know, like the rabbits, I've got to take down the automatic watering system because that's going to freeze up. It already has frozen up a couple of times. And even if the daytime temperatures are going to get up above, like say 45, 50, 60 degrees even, if the nighttime temperatures are getting down in the teens or you know colder, this whole system freezes up and it takes all day long before it thaws out. So the, the quail are without water really they don't really get any water if this thing freezes. It takes a long time for it to thaw out. So I've got to take this down, uh, get this all cleaned up, get it put away real quick, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about what other things I do to make sure the quail are taken care of in the winter time. All right, so we got the watering system down. We got it put away for the winter. We'll break it back out in the summertime. But there's you know, really not a big difference between the quail and the rabbits as far as their requirements for winter time. Now, I do think they need a little bit more protection from the weather than the rabbits do. The rabbits tend to tolerate that a little bit better than these guys do. The cold temperatures don't bother them so much. It's the wind, the rain, the snow, you know, the elements, I guess, is what can really affect your quail and really can bother them. So you do need to make sure that you provide them with some kind of way to get out of the weather, whether that be like a big hide box type thing in there, make sure it's covered on the bottom as well so they don't have drafts coming up from underneath. You know, something like that, or like I build my hutches with uh, one section, let me open this up and we'll show you, one section that's just completely closed off. I don't know how well you can see that on camera, but it's completely closed off and it's filled with sand on the bottom. Now, these guys tend to spend, that goes for winter or summer, really, honestly. They tend to spend a lot of time in that sandbox. They really appreciate it. And they lay all their eggs in the sandbox, for the most part. So you get super clean eggs, and they're easy to collect. So that's a kind of a win-win situation there. Um, as far as uh, keeping them watered, that's, again, the trickiest part about wintertime with any of my animals is keeping them watered so it doesn't freeze. Now, I have switched over to a... Let me bring you in a little bit close. We'll show you real quick because I've got it set up in here. I don't have it plugged in yet because like I said, we're not below freezing. I don't think we're going to get below freezing the next couple of days. So I'll bring, I've got my extension cord running to the brooder box in the shed right now instead of running out here to plug in the watering system. But I do have a heated watering system for the quail that worked out fantastic last year. And I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so this is make sure you can see that. Let me tilt the camera down just a little bit so you can see it maybe a little bit better. There we go. This is a two gallon poultry drinker from Farm Innovations, I believe. Let me uh, take a look. Ugh. I think it's Farm Innovations. Anyway, it is in my um, Amazon shop. So if you need one of these, you can pick it up in my Amazon shop. And it's got these water nipples right here on the bottom. Three of them, one, two, three on the other, one on the other side as well, um, and it plugs in. It's got a thermostat heater, uh, heated base to it, thermostat controlled heated base. Uh, when it drops below, I think it's 40 degrees, that heater kicks on and keeps it warm. Now, as long as you keep this thing out of the wind, that's why it's in this sandbox area for them. It, I never had a problem with it freezing up at all last year. It stayed perfectly fine. They do say it needs to be protected from the weather, so you can't just set it out in the wire part of the cage the wind blowing across there is going to cause these nipples to freeze up on you. But putting it in an enclosed area like this right here has worked out great. Um, now I just put this in here today trying to get the birds acclimated to it. And um, I'm not sure if they're, I, I think they'll probably figure it out pretty quick. Um, you know, these birds I don't think have ever drank out of water nipples, but you know, they'll, they'll figure it out. They, they tend to test everything out and they'll figure it out pretty quick on their own. There shouldn't be really much of anything I have to do to train them to it. Um, but you know, if you need to, you can come in here and 
push the water button a little bit and you know they kind of figure it out I'm watching them for a minute to see Yep, I can hear one drinking out of it right now. I can't see him because he's on the other side of the bucket, but I can hear it. I can hear him hitting that water. He, he knows it's there, and once he's figured it out, the rest of them are going to figure it out too. So we're good. Um, these guys acclimated it to it pretty quickly. All right, let me get this closed up. We'll talk about a few more things. Okay, so again, you don't need to stuff their cages with straw or any of that kind of stuff. You just provide them with some way to get out of the weather, out of the wind when they need to. They'll self-regulate. They'll hang out here when they want to. They'll go in there when they want to. Now, half my birds spend most of their time in the sandboxes and just love it. Half of them spend most of their time out here. I found them out here when it's just blowing snow and they're just milling around out here in the open. No problems whatsoever. They handle the cold incredibly well. I've got viewers that live in very cold parts of the world way up north and, and say the same things that they don't do anything special for their birds uh, let me talk about one way to water your birds though if you don't have electricity running out here if you don't have a way to, to run a heated waterer for them there's a really easy way to do that and that is using let me show you real quick uh, what i use for their feeders this is a feeder but it's the same concept i use for a water it's just a um, tupperware style container these are glad cheap disposable containers. I need to build some new ones. They're starting to crack and break. It's been a while. And just cut a hole in the side. I don't know what that is. Maybe an inch, inch and a half. I just cut a small hole big enough for them to stick their heads through. Cut it up high on the container. And then when you go out to water them, like I said, this has got feed in it right now, but it's the same thing I use for waterers when I don't use an, a, um, an electric watering system with them, a heated one. Um, just fill it up a little bit with water. Same concept with the rabbits. Fill it up right here. They'll come and drink out of it as soon as you put water in there, get their fill come back in the evening fill it up a little bit more um, and they'll come and get their drinks out of it again before you know they'll get their fill uh, that way and then uh, what I usually do is keep two of these so I can take one inside the thigh out these these will break if you try to bust the ice out of them uh, so I don't do that I just keep two of them take one inside to, to thaw out the next day and bring a fresh one out and I just trade them out every other day if that makes sense that's a pretty simple way to keep them watered um, and they do just fine like that I did that for a very long time um, before I got, I was very skeptical of the heated watering system. My wife actually bought it for me for Christmas, I think, or my birthday, one of the two. And um, I, I tried it out and I was surprised, but it worked great. I was very concerned that the nipples would freeze up no matter how warm you kept it. But we had pretty cold temperatures last year. It never froze up one time. It did a fantastic job. So I've switched over to that. Um, I will say when you water them, I mean, you could do that in bowls or crocs or something like that, kind of like with the rabbits. but. You, you don't want to, you're really better off having something that has a lid on it that keeps the birds out of it because they will get in the water, they'll foul it up, they'll make it all kinds of nasty, plus they're getting wet and when, you know freezing temperatures and wet birds that doesn't go together very well at all. So it's best to use something like uh, what I showed you there that has a lid on it that they can get on but they're not going to get in the water itself. Um, keeps the water cleaner, keeps them safer, it just works best all the way around. All right, so this hutch over here has birds in it as well. Um, right now, I've just got a bowl, a crock, very similar to what I'm using. I, you probably can't see it. You might be able to see a little bit of it on here, but it's just the same kind of watering system I'm using for my rabbits uh, because I needed something kind of in a pinch. I didn't have anything set up. We got freezing temperatures. The watering system froze up, and I just stuck a bowl in there and put some water in it for them. I did that several days ago. I plan on actually processing this entire hutch right here. Um, and just keeping that one for the winter time. There's no reason to feed these guys out. I'm not hatching eggs over the winter time, so there's no reason to keep extra birds over the winter. I've got plenty in this hutch right here that I can um, get a big hatch in the spring and get my numbers back up very, very quickly, keep my feed costs down for the winter time. So I'm just keeping a minimum of birds. I've got about uh, 12 or 13 hens right now, and that's all I'm keeping, just the 12 or 13 hens and three roosters. That's it. Um, the rest of these birds are all going to get processed, uh, but the problem is it's Thanksgiving week and my refrigerator is full, so I don't have anywhere to age the meat. So I'm going to wait till next week probably. These guys will do just fine with a water bowl for a week. I got to clean it out every day because it gets really nasty. They get in it, they foul it up, like I said. So every morning when I come out here to water them, I got to rinse it out, wash it out, put more water in it, put it back in there. But it's only going to be for a week, so not a big deal. 
All right, well, this was a pretty short, simple, right to the point video because it's really a pretty short and simple concept. I know when I first started out, one of my big concerns was how do I keep these animals in the winter and when it's super cold out and it's miserable for me to go outside, how do I keep them healthy? How do I keep them happy? Well, it turns out that they're actually much more tolerant of that stuff than we are. Uh, they are much, uh, you know, especially the rabbits you know, with those big fur coats on, they can handle that stuff. They're, they're way happier in the winter time than they are in the heat of summer. And I think even the quail are actually a little bit happier. You don't see them sitting out here panting, looking stressed. And when it's 100 degrees out, even if you've got them in a good shady spot, it, it, it's still, you know, it's tough on them. It, it is stressful for them. And I think wintertime, even when it's just super cold out, they don't seem to mind too much. They get in here and huddle up together and I see them out here just laying out here by themselves right out in the out wide open when it's, you know, 10 degrees out, five degrees with a negative 10 degree wind chill. You know, it's, it's just, they, they don't seem to mind too much at all. Give them a way to get out of the wind, make sure they have food and water. They're going to do just fine. You don't need to stress. You don't need to go overboard with it. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video. You got what you needed out of it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, God bless.